going to happen to real estate in the long Are you an empty nester who needs a home for the future? Is it time to downsize or move into another home more suitable for your retirement years? Well, like thousands of home sellers, you may be discovering that after years of non-stop child traffic in and out your doors, toys on the floor, music floating throughout, suddenly you can hear a pin drop over the quiet hum of your refrigerator. Your rooms are filled with pictures and memories of this wonderful time in your life. But there are many empty rooms gathering dust now that your children have moved on. The freer years ahead are exciting ones to look forward to, and it may be time for you to move as well. If you find yourself in this situation, you're in a vast and good company. And what that means is that there are many wonderful opportunities for you to create this new chapter in your life. If you know what it takes to get the most out of your equity you've built up in your current home to help you understand the issues involved in making such a move and how to avoid the most common and costly mistakes most empty nesters make, we've prepared this special report to help you identify and plan for that move ahead. Selling your home is one of the most important steps in your life. We'll give you the tools you need to maximize your profits, maintain control, and reduce the stress that comes along with the home selling process. So one of the steps is to know why you're selling and keep it to yourself. The reasons behind your decision to sell affect everything from setting a price to deciding how much time and money to invest in getting your home ready for sale. Number two, do your homework before setting a price. Settling on an offer price shouldn't be done lightly. Number three, find out what other homes are selling for. In fact, your agent should do this for you. Find out what comparable homes in your own and similar neighborhoods have sold for in the past two to four months and research what current homes are listed for. That's certainly how prospective buyers will access the worth of your home. Number four, find a good real estate agent to represent your needs. Nearly three quarters of homeowners claim that w they would not use the same realtor who sold their last home. This, this satisfaction boils down to poor communication, which results in not enough feedback, lower pricing, and strained relations. Number five, maximize your home sale potential. Appearance is crucial, and it would be foolish to ignore this when selling your home. You may not be able to change your home's location or the floor plan, but you can do a lot to improve its appearance. The look and the feel of your home generates a greater emotional response than any other factor. So before a showing, clean like you've never cleaned before. Pick up, straighten, unclutter, scrub, scour, and dust. Fix everything, no matter how insignificant it may appear. Present your home to get a wow response from prospective buyers. Allow the buyers to imagine themselves living in your home. The decision to buy a home is based on emotion, not logic. Prospective buyers want to try on your home, just like they would a new suit or a pair of shoes. So if you follow them around, pointing out improvements, or if your decor is so different that it's difficult for a buyer to strip it away, in his or her mind, you make it very difficult for them to feel comfortable enough to imagine themselves living in this home and being an owner. So number six, make it easy for prospects to get information on your home. You may be surprised to know that some marketing tools that most agents use to sell homes, for example, traditional open houses, are actually not very effective. In fact, only 1% of homes that are sold are th through an open house. Furthermore, the prospect calling for information on your home probably value their time as much as you do. Seven, know your buyer. In the negotiation process, your objective is to control the pace and set the duration. What is your buyer's motivation? Does he or she need to move quickly? Does he or she have enough money to pay for your asking price. Knowing this information gives you 
the upper hand in the negotiations because you now know how far you can push to get what you want. Number eight, don't move out before you sell. Studies have shown that it is more difficult to sell a home that is vacant because it looks for loan forgotten, simply not appealing. It could even cost you thousands. If you have to move, you're also telling buyers that you have a new home and you're probably highly motivated to sell fast. This of course will give them the advantage at the negotiation table. Oh, 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 o